What's up everybody? Welcome to your third tutorial in CSS. Last time we learned how to write basic syntax for CSS, and this time we're going to be learning how to group different elements in CSS. Now last time as you can see, whenever we wanted to write a rule for the same selector, we simply wrote a rule, and then directly underneath it, wrote another rule for it. Now this works just fine, and it can be interpreted by any browser just fine but there's actually an easier way to group these two rules and that's by doing this in the same declaration you can add different rules by separating them with a semicolon so after the word blue I'm just gonna type a semicolon and type another let's say background color and I'm gonna set it equal to red just like before as you can see we now have two rules one changing the text color blue and one changing the background color red so let's save this and see what it looks like in Internet Explorer and as you can see it's the exact same as before but it's a lot better organized in your syntax now most people add different rules on different lines just to keep things organized and they usually add a semicolon at the end of every one no matter if it's separated or not this is just good practice for when you're writing syntax it just gets you used to the feeling of adding a semicolon and it makes it a whole lot easier when you're typing long rules so while this is one way of grouping your declarations you can actually group selectors in a similar way. Say not only you wanted to apply this rule to the body, but you wanted to apply it to the heading as, as well. You could go down here and type in heading one and then start typing your entire declaration all over again, or you could do something else. If you have the same rule, that you want to apply to different element you can simply add a different element by pressing comma and typing in the name of your element so as you can see this rule not only applies to the body but also the first headings and the paragraphs of your entire website and we did this without having to type two entirely separate rules now if you want to use a rule on something but you don't want it to apply to every single element say you wanted to change something about the heading but you didn't want to apply to all the headings as it would right now you can add an attribute that CSS included called the style attribute now this is useful when you only want to change one element and not all of them in your entire website so let's say we wanted to add a border to one of the headings heading number three so let's go ahead and create a heading heading number three and inside we'll write using style attribute and we'll go ahead and close it just like any other normal normal heading but we want to add an attribute that's going to give us a border with three pixels and we only want it to apply to this and no other headings so let's go ahead and add the attribute called style and set it equal to border with three pixels and we'll make it solid and black now as you can see this is the exact same syntax of CSS and if you wanted to add another rule, you could simply add a semicolon and type it in just like you did before. The only difference is instead of using curly braces, you use quotation marks. So as you can see, if we save that and viewed it in Internet Explorer, we now had a heading with a black border around it. And this would apply only to this heading and not any other heading number threes. So this is a way where you can apply CSS to only a single element 
versus this which would apply it to all the H1 and all the P elements on your page. So now that we learn how to group selectors and use the style attribute to apply CSS to a single element in your page, next, we're, next time we're going to be learning how to use keywords and strings. And of course, if you want to review what we went over today, you can go to my website, thenewboston.com, and I'll give you a step-by-step -step instruction on everything we learned today. Thanks.